everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I hope that you have been enjoying your Monday. So we'll be looking at what is currently happening across the Atlantic with focus being on the Caribbean and surrounding areas. So let's get straight into it. Here we're zooming down to parts of the South and Central Caribbean as well as Northern South America. And there is quite a bit of activity in some areas. Uh, portions of the Windward Islands for portions of Dominica headed toward Martinique, uh, even for St. Lucia, St. Vincent, the Grenadines and even Grenada through today, there has been some rainfall activity even continuing for some areas as we head into this evening for Barbados as well there has been some uh, rainfall and even down in Trinidad and Tobago maybe even with some thunderstorms in some areas so you can let me know what's been happening for your area uh, regardless of where you are in the Caribbean you can share what's been going on for you as we head down into northern South America it's a similar story we see even more blobs of all that activity and those white dots they indicate lightning strikes so quite a bit is going on across portions of northern South America Colombia Venezuela and even into the Guyanas as well, especially for Guyana. And then for the ABC Islands, there hasn't been too much uh, through today. We're looking at the rest of the region here. Overall, it's been a quiet day for most persons. We still see that concentrated area of all that activity over in the Western Caribbean, likely still bringing some periods of some downpours to sections of uh, Belize, even going toward sections of the offshore islands, the Keys, as well as the Bay Islands of Honduras, and even Honduras itself. We're even seeing some thunderstorms developing in parts of uh, Nicaragua headed to Costa Rica and Panama and then over into uh, parts of Guatemala and El Salvador as well. Cayman Islands there hasn't been much today for portions of Jamaica especially southern parishes there has been some rainfall so uh, St. Elizabeth even parts of Westmoreland going to Manchester even going toward portions of southern St. Catherine and Kingston. So again you can let me know what's been happening for you in the comments. For parts of Cuba uh, some shower activity mostly for the eastern side but there hasn't been anything too crazy and many other areas remain in the clear because there hasn't been anything too much going on parts of puerto rico have received some rainfall activity earlier today for the virgin islands as well not for every island but some islands across uh, the area have received some rainfall activity now i want to take you guys to this graph here and uh it is showing the shear in the caribbean that wind shear which really helps to prevent development when it is quite strong so on the horizontal line down there there we can see the labelings for the different months of the year january february march april may june etc and then as we head up on that vertical line uh, as we head to those higher values that is indicative of stronger shear stronger shear equates to a smaller chance of seeing development it really helps to prevent all that activity uh, from being concentrated within these low pressure areas which may try to form now take a look at this there's a, uh, that black line that is the average shear so there we can see the months uh, going all the way to June that is when the shear is typically at its strongest but uh, that is not true for the entirety of this period here going from this uh, the start of January toward the start of June and then we see that dip between June and November which is the hurricane season and that makes sense I mean that is when conditions are most conducive across the northern hemisphere for us to see development and then it kicks back up as we head to the latter part of November headed toward December and then back to January so within the off season months the share is usually at its highest but uh, here we are right now that blue jagged line that is representative of what has happened this year and here is where we currently are so we can see that now in the early part of November the share is not too bad across the Caribbean again as we head further up that means the shear is stronger which means more of an unfavorable environment for development across the Caribbean but the shear is not too crazy right now as depicted on this graph but it is something that varies a lot as we can see it has done through the year but uh, with reduced uh, strong upper level winds across the Caribbean and those very warm waters then uh, we could definitely see development as what some models have been hinting at there's likely to be that increase in moisture so we're going to be taking a look at what a couple of models have to show and we're starting out with the GFS. So GFS continues to be quite bullish about this potential system here. Uh, it is expecting that we could see as, as strong as a major hurricane in the Caribbean and I'm not really expecting that. Not ruling it out completely but uh, I'm not expecting that there will be a major hurricane. I mean with these fronts coming out of the US they're likely to increase the shear at times and even bring with them that cool dry air and that dry air is an enemy 
enemy to these systems that try to form. So here we are as we head to Thursday of next week. There's that uh, tropical storm maybe going on to hurricane status that GFS is forecasting in the Northwest Caribbean. And then as we head out to Friday, it is showing a stronger system making its way to the just south of Jamaica right there uh, and kind of loitering around for a bit, going a bit more east before it would eventually make a turn back toward the west. And then offshore of the Turks and Caicos Islands, they were seeing that next big area of disorganized activity seemingly trying to develop. As we head on to the Euro model again, with that expected front, uh, maybe as we head into the early part of next week, we could definitely see the tail end of it kind of stay behind and it may try to get some energy going along with it. They were seeing that increase in moisture, all those colors, they represent the precipitation rate. Those greens, yellows, oranges, reds represent the precipitation rate. So just in portions of the Gulf of Mexico, there we can see that. And even across the Caribbean, again, with that moisture increase. So Euro is not showing a defined system in the Caribbean at the time. This is as we head out to Tuesday the 14th, headed toward Thursday. Uh, we're not seeing a whole lot of activity in the area. Again, there could be quite a bit of rainfall across Central America. Uh, that seems very likely at this point. But in terms of development, there are still some question marks about that. As we head to the Canadian model, the Canadian model is also showing all that increase in moisture not showing something actually forming though with the icon model this is as we head out to friday the 10th there's that front about to make its way out of the u.s down into the gulf and offshore and we are seeing an increase in moisture across the caribbean as that front would make its way out there we can see the tail end trying to gather some energy just in the western part of the gulf of mexico so icon is not showing that we'll see a tropical cyclone development but it is definitely showing that area of all that concentrated activity and all that moisture that will be making its way into Central America kind of feeding into it and I mean uh, a lot of persons right now have been impacted by a lot of the heavy rains which have uh, gone on for days across portions of Central America. Uh, many persons lost their possessions. Unfortunately, there were some fatalities as well due to the heavy rains. First from that front which made its way down and then that Caribbean system 97L which made its way in and the trough associated. And we're still seeing some rainfall activity in the area. The good news, conditions will improve and kind of dry up a bit before this next uh, big increase in moisture which is some good news because I mean it would be worst case scenario if this was expected as we head into the latter part of this week so fortunately that is not the case nonetheless many persons have gone through these days of flooding and uh, that's definitely not something that we would want to see again very soon but unfortunately it looks as though that could be on the horizon as we head into next week going to around the mid and latter part of next week but of course guys as usual i'll be keeping you posted as time goes by so that is pretty much it for this update and i hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll respond to you when I can and remember to always be weatherwise.